Let us pray. Help us to grow more deeply connected to you. And let it be a journey that is life-changing and spirit-filled. Amen. Are we seeking a true relationship with Christ? Or are we just going through the motions so that other Christians will look at us and call us great? That's what Jesus is saying, basically, right? That's a, that's a good, good paraphrase. He's bringing up the question of why we do things. How many of us have questioned why we do things in a while? Mm. Mm. Why do we come to church? Why do we give our tithes? Why do we give our time? Why do we... Provide outreach. Why do we believe in God? Jesus is asking us why. Is it because there's grandeur in it? Well, I'm going to say for renewed and grace, probably not. I think you guys are safe on that one. Is it um, because we want to feel better than others? Mm. What is it all for? Only you can answer that. Is it to be recognized, to be praised? Or is it that we truly just want to be shaped by our God because we've been touched by God? In Christ's time, there were a lot of theatrics. I don't know if you knew this, but they used to hire professional grievers when people died. So they would wail and throw themselves on the ground. And they didn't even know this person. But they would come and they would make a big thing. And, and they would uh, scream and holler. And, and wow, what a spectacle. If someone died, everyone in the town knew. People in Christ's time loved theatrics. It was all about who's who. What you do. And how you present yourself to others. And Jesus is saying, well, there's a lot of people who do a lot of these things who don't believe what they're doing. And they're just going through the motions because they want to be praised by others. They want to be looked highly upon. And Jesus is saying, you care more about what the other people think about you than what God thinks about you. And that can be hard to hear. Because there was a, well, I am doing what God wanted me to do. 
But in Jesus' time, it was much more about right practice and a lot less about right belief. We take that for granted today. We're all about belief in the Christian spheres. You've got to believe, 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 believe. Believe that Jesus is your Savior. Believe in God. Back then, it didn't matter. As long as you were doing the right things, the right motions, part of the right family, you were in. It didn't matter what you believed. And Jesus is saying, but it does. Jesus is saying, it both matter. Asking the question, do we practice because we believe what we're doing? Or do we practice because we want to believe what we're doing? Or are we just practicing because that's what you do? Jesus wouldn't be okay with practicing to be praised or adorned. Lutherans, I think, for the most part, are pretty good about this. <laughs> we are not the boastful kind of denomination. I hope you know that. In, in ecumenical spheres with other church denominations, we are the least boastful. We're so not boastful that we're boastful about our non-boastfulness. Yeah, wow, we just... We are a humble denomination. We got that down. But what did we lose in our humility? We lost our zeal. It didn't happen right away. I don't know if you remember me talking about Luther, but he was a crazy person. He was loud, obnoxious, got drunk on multiple occasions, he was anti-Semitic. He called the Pope an antichrist. He was not humble. And here we are, the humble Lutherans. What happened? I think we took Jesus' words to heart. We were like, well, our leader over there is a little nuts. Well, I think we need to calm down a little bit. But what did we lose? We lost our ability to talk to people about Christ. We were so concerned about not being boastful, about being humble, we've lost our ability to talk to other people about our own faith. And this came with good intentions. But decade after decade and generation after generation of wanting to be that humble denomination, we got comfortable. And we lost something. In our attempt to follow what Christ was telling us, we went too far in one direction without even realizing it. And we started putting practice above belief, practice of humility, and we forgot why we were even doing it. There's a balance. And that's what Jesus was trying to do. Bring back that balance. And you know how we bring back balance? It's the bad word that starts with a C. Change. For a long time, we've confused this passage as if this applies to the church. It doesn't. It applies to individuals. So it's okay if we boast a little bit about what we as Christ's church are doing in the world. It's okay to talk about Christ because the point of all of this is Christ, is God. If we're sharing our faith with our fellow humans, it's not because we think we're better than other people. 
It's because we've been touched by something and want others to experience the same. It's not about how faithful I, as the person saying my faith is. It's about how awesome this true treasure that we have here is. Our humility turned into quiet. And an inability to move. Do you ever hear that saying, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions? Nothing we've done, I think, was evil on how we got to this point of extreme silence. But maybe when we're faced with this place of mainline Christianity, maybe that's Jesus coming in and saying, wake up. When we think about dust to dust, and we remember on this Ash Wednesday what it means to be dust and to return to dust, it means that it's not about the individual. That's about the collective. And that God is the reason that we come together to do all these great things. And there is nothing wrong with proclaiming how we together are living into what Christ calls us to be in the world. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. So this Ash Wednesday, let not the words that you hear, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return, be a source of insignificance of your life. Because those words can almost feel like my life doesn't matter. That's not what they mean. It's a reminder that we're all made from dust. So we're all interconnected. And as a collective, as a church, we live on through Christ. Our individual bodies will return to this pile of dust that God created us from. And that dust will live on. That God that we worked our entire lives to get closer to, the church that we volunteered in and worshipped in, and not the building, but the whole church, the universal church, the billions of believers that we are a part of in this world. We will be in eternity with all of them. And you can rest knowing that you had a part in this proclamation. And that even though you are dust, that I am dust, we did some pretty impressive things as dust. Don't be so humble. I know Jesus says to, but what he was trying to say is that those who scream on the mountaintops, the Joel Olsteins of the world, they're the ones who need to be a little more humble. Not us humble Lutherans. So remember that you are dust and the dust you shall return, but also remember that we are all made from the same dust and that that dust has the breath of God in it. And that's some pretty amazing dust. Proclaim it. Amen. Now may God, the Creator, strengthen you, Jesus, the Beloved, fill you, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you all in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.